So everyone, my name is Jason Swinford, and I want to talk to you today about a small provision in a uh, very large act uh, that has a very profound effect on our society. Uh, that is the aid elimination provision of the Higher Education Act. So first, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about how this provision uh, almost made me somebody different. So I've now done two speeches on drugs, but I currently am not a drug user, have not been for a very long time. Uh, but that was very different when I was in high school. Uh, I went to class regularly, made good grades, but I smoked a lot of marijuana. Uh, it didn't catch up with me until I was about 18. I was uh, just leaving high school, and I was driving back from uh, Florida on a trip, and got busted in a town called Burton, Alabama, for a minor possession charge. Uh, I had less than a joint's worth of marijuana, if that means anything to anybody, very little amount. Uh, I had to pay $600 at that time to leave the jail, to be able to go home. And I spent the next few months uh, talking and interacting with the sheriff that arrested me, as well as the local judge. I spent this time trying to get my charge um, dropped, because I did not want a drug charge on my record. Uh, after all the effort that I made, it never did get dropped. It just got changed. Um, it got changed to a public intoxication charge, as opposed to a possession charge. Uh, that distinction, um, had it stuck to be a marijuana possession charge, I would not now have nearly two degrees, both of which have graduated with honors, and would not be entering pharmacy school this coming fall. So um, since this provision was signed into law, uh, nearly 200,000 students have been denied federal aid and access to higher education. Uh, the two leading um, people that are leading the charge against this are the Students for Sensible Drug Policy, as well as the American Civil Liberties Union. Uh, the Higher Education Act uh, was intended to improve our society by opening doors for those less fortunate, but the aid elimination provision uh, has only closed those doors and left very few options for people with a drug conviction uh, to better their lives. So the Higher Education Act was signed into law in 1965 uh, by President Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> this act was a part of his uh, Great Society Domestic Agenda. Uh, the Great Society domestic agenda was very similar to the uh, New Deal initiatives. Uh, it was meant to eliminate poverty and reduce racial injustice in our country, and it created programs like Medicare and Medicaid that we still have today. Uh, the HEA, or the Higher Education Act, opened up doors to students who were previously restricted from higher education uh, because of their financial constraints, which are often not self-imposed. You can't really help which families that you're born into. Uh, this act also brought about the Federal Direct Student Loan Program, uh, which funds student loans by the U.S. Department of Education uh, with monies from the National Treasury. This offers low interest rates, low interest loans for students uh, who maintain certain grade point averages as well as attendance records. Uh, this also brought about the Federal uh, Family Education Loan, which is only second to the direct loans in student lending. This, however, was eliminated in 2010 by the Obama administration. Uh, really in an effort to eliminate the middleman, such as Sally May, um, and so students could get more of their loans directly from the federal government instead of having to deal with an intermediary. But it also brought about other loan products that many of you have heard of, uh, Perkins, Stafford, consolidation loans, PLUS loans, and parent PLUS loans, and still subsidizes many private student loans to this day. So this act is reauthorized every few years. Uh, it goes basically every two to three years from 1968 until now. Uh, and during these reauthorizations, um, they amend new programs, this is Congress, they change the language and policies of existing programs, and they make other needed changes. So the reauthorization in 1998 established the aid elimination penalty and question number 31 on the FAFSA. Have you ever been convicted of a, a drug charge? This little, uh, author, this little uh, amendment was put into a 275-page reauthorization and got a little more than a second glance. This uh, aid elimination penalty states that a student who is convicted of any offense under any federal or state law involving the possession or sale of a controlled substance shall not be eligible to receive any grant, loan, or work assistance under this title during the period beginning on the date of such conviction and ending after the interval specified. So this inter interval specified ranges anywhere from a year for your first conviction to indefinite for your third you will never get student loans or funding. So this age elimination, uh, this age elimination penalty um, adversely affects minorities the most. 
uh, due to racial profiling and the already discriminatory enforcement of drug laws, it keeps them out of school at a much higher rate than the general population. It also disproportionately affects lower to middle income families, those that the HEA was originally created to help. Uh, wealthier families do not rely on government aid to pay for college. And many times they can also afford an attorney to avoid the drug charge in the first place. Drug convictions will deny a student uh, of aid, especially, specifically those with good attendance and a GPA in order to get those funds. But murderers, burglars, and other serious criminals are still eligible to apply for the FAFSA. It punishes individuals twice for the same infraction. So not only do the victims receive punishment from the penal system, from fines to jail time, but now their access to a better future is greatly hindered afterwards. The Government Accountability Office, which is the uh, research arm of Congress, recently stated it could find no evidence that this penalty has actually helped to deter drug use. Taking a student's option of a higher education affects our society by limiting the individual's choices. We increase their chances for burdening either the criminal justice system or social programs, which in turn affects every taxpayer in this country. So what can we do? So first and foremost, we can join these students for sensible drug policy. This is an international grassroots network. Uh, their main goal is to end the war on drugs, which has failed our generation and it's failed our society. They have seven chapters in just Colorado alone. CU, DU, Red Rocks, Fort Lewis all have a chapter. And locally, you can go to the Facebook page, <coughs> facebook.com backslash Auraria SDP if you want more information. You can interact with your local senator and house representatives. Uh, you can do this by writing letters to them. Uh, you can also ask for an appointment with the necessary staff. Just make sure that you're very well prepared and professional when you do so. You can also convince student government and faculty government to repeal this act. And if you're quite talented and probably with the help of the SSDP, you can persuade the university president to endorse the repeal of this act. And the last way, and probably the less work intensive, is just sign petitions. So this is a petition specifically from uh, RaiseYourVoice.com. Uh, this is a website that is devoted specifically to the, uh, the health, uh, sorry, the Higher Education Act. Um, so they basically attack anything that they think is unfair or against our civil liberties. Um, so this is a uh, just part of a petition they have pre-wrote for you to send specifically to your senator or a House representative. Uh, you can also go to uh, www.change.org, which has uh, many petitions all across the spectrum. So condemning drug offenders well after their debt has been paid has great cost for society and has done very little to increase the drug use in this country. Removing the ability to further one's education will only create greater disparities for lower to middle income families and it will continue to fuel the fire that the drug war started nearly 30 years ago.